Welcome to Wager Talk TV, where we are previewing the top 25. Guys, I'm Kelly Stewart, at Kelly in Vegas on Twitter, Marco D'Angelo, at Marco in Vegas, and Ralph Michaels, my favorite guy down there, at Cal Sports LV. Top liver? The two children you never wanted, Marco, remember? <laughs> you just said that about 37 seconds ago. All right, guys, let's talk Oklahoma. Uh, one of the cool things that we just did here at Wager Talk, in case you didn't see in the Alabama video, is we partnered with a company called Touchdown Alabama. So we get all of this great Alabama insight. Well, that also meant we got some great Jalen Hurts insight the other day at lunch. Mark, I'll let you kind of touch base on uh, what we talked about with those guys. Oh, I mean, Jalen Hurts, this kid, he's special. I mean, we've seen what he can do on the field. But to take a team to a national championship game and then lose your, your starting job – most kids would not. And then not to come back in the SEC championship game, get you back to the national championship game, and then still lose your starting job. Yeah. Uh, most people wouldn't have, you know, sat as quietly and been, a, you know, a team player the way he has. Now, he did, you know, transfer out, and he should. I mean, this is a kid that's trying to get to the next level, and you're not going to do that sitting there waiting, you know, if something happens to Tua. So he moves to Oklahoma, and Lincoln Riley is a QB guru. Let's face it. He, Baker Mayfield, two years ago, transferred into Oklahoma, becomes Heisman Trophy winner. Kyler Murray, another transfer, comes in, Heisman Trophy winner. Can he make it three in a row? We'll see. Uh, Jalen Hurts uh, has a, no. The answer's no. Uh, oh, you think most, Tua's going to win it? No, I just, oh. I just know they're not going to give it to an Oklahoma player three years in a row. There's, <laughs> there's that mentality when you're voting. Fair you got to remember, people don't vote for back-to-backs because Archie Griffin was Archie Griffin, and it's it's the Heisman voters that vote plus the media. And so, you used to have one of those votes, didn't you? Yeah. So you know how yeah, it works. Absolutely. In, there is a lot of politics mind. involved, it, unlike some others. So sorry, off tangent, but, but go ahead. But, he but comes the in. idea is still, still Lincoln Riley, still was a great yes. offensive coordinator, still has that and same mentality. of the three quarterbacks, he inherits – one with the most experience and is already proven to be a winner. So the Oklahoma offense is going to be potent again. The question mark is, and we know these programs can reload the powerhouses, but they've got a lot of reloading to do on the offensive line. And that's my only concern, having to only one starter coming back on that offensive line, have the new quarterback. The offense might be a little bit you know, some growing pains early on, but as we know, these teams don't schedule tough teams early on, so they'll have some time to adjust the defense. I'm going to beg to differ that point. Okay. Because Oklahoma does have Houston and UCLA. So while, okay. while they may not be pick, and while they may be a 10-point favorite, it's two very good games. And we've games. seen Oklahoma falter to it. And, and you're Houston talking team. about right. a Chip Kelly Brandon team with 19 right. starters back yeah. for you. So while while they didn't, they don't have cream puffs, so they are going to be challenged. It's going to be good games. They're going to win those games, I believe, but they will be tested, which is the difference. The question, and I'll give it to you, Ralph, the good news is Oklahoma brings back 9 out of 11 starters on defense. So the default is that defense is going to be a lot better this year. Well, it can't be any worse because was it was, say, that was the one of the worst defenses in college football last year, and the offense was so potent that they had, you know, they scored because they gave them up. I mean, think about that West Virginia game. Uh, remember, I, I got tired watching that well, one going the, up and down the, the field. The joke's been for the last few years, no one plays defense in the Big 12 because we've seen that offensive switch you got to give your defense some time to have a break. And Oklahoma did not give their guys much time to sit on the bench and catch their breath. And, Ralph, I'll go to you. Is this, with the defenses being as bad as they are, is it, like I said in the other video, the offenses score too quick? You know, I know you, you don't want to not score, but when you score in a, in a minute and a half or two minutes and your defense is right back out on the field, they get worn out. I'm sorry. Yeah, they do. But again, it depends on what conference you play. It, you know, it's got them to the championship. They're they're going to be a double-digit favorite in nine games. In this three games, they aren't double-digit favorites. They're going to be at least a six-point favorite. So, you know, you're looking at everything's under their control. You talked about the O-line returns only one starter. They do uh, they do also add R.J. Proctor, who was a very good offensive lineman at Virginia, started a, a full season, and he's going to fit right in, so he's fine. But you got a thousand-yard rusher. You got three of your top four receivers you got eight of your top nine tacklers uh, and when you look at their defense I have eight back some people have nine it depends how you count them you know I, I count I counted eight back and then but when you look at the losses 
There's one on the D line, one on the linebacker, one in the secondary. That's what you want from your defense is only to lose one from each unit because then you have young guys learning from experienced guys. I do like Oklahoma's schedule. The Texas game is sandwiched between Kansas and West Virginia. West Virginia has the fewest starters back in football. It's not the same team as it was and last new, year with coach. Will Greer that and you're no talking about. They have a bye before Iowa State, who I have number two in the conference ahead of Texas. They have a bye before Texas Tech, who is going to be there. So Oklahoma's, Oklahoma's set until their last four games when they have Iowa State at Baylor, TCU, and at Oklahoma State. So they have a back-heavy schedule where back-to-back-to-back games are going to be in that touchdown to 10-point range where if they falter at all or if they have some injuries, they may fall back. But, you know, to me, again, the way they're situated, yes, they may lose one. Yes, they may lose two. And the last thing I'll say about them is this. I think... With the Pac-12 not having any team in the playoffs since, I think, Oregon, with the Big Ten getting shut out last year, if there's a one-loss Big Ten or a one-loss Pac-12 team, Oklahoma will be out. I think that the committee will just say Oklahoma's been there a couple years. And not they, done anything. Right, they were 12-1 and one in those two years, and then they lost. So I think they're the odd man out if one of the other conferences have one loss each. Not that it ever happens, and we don't want to play conspiracy theory. I mean, it's happened. Okay. But. Happened to TCU and Baylor. Okay. If Oklahoma's sitting there on the docket, and there is a chance that you can hook up the national championship game with Alabama and Oklahoma and have Tua and Jalen Hurts playing one another, that would be the biggest story. You talk about politics. A one, a one loss Michigan or a one loss Ohio State will get there before a one loss Oklahoma. I yeah, don't care but, about two but, and but, but they, Listen, headlines is one thing, is but dollars from the donors or something else completely. Yeah. Ohio State and Michigan draws much more than them, and there will exactly. be more people watching those games. So I, 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 I would love, for me as, as a, just a fan, I would love to see those two hook up, whether it's in the championship game or, or one the of the first play- Well, would it be the championship game? Because Oklahoma and Alabama, yeah. Clemson and Alabama yeah. are one and two. two. So we're just True. looking at three and four. All right, guys, make sure you like and share our videos. Want to share some of your thoughts on a game. Give us some feedback. Maybe even suggest a video. Leave us a comment below and be eligible to win a free week of service.